Let me go back to the standby pump. There is three ways that you can activate the standby pump. All right? So three ways that you can activate the standby pump. One, by putting the flight control switches by any, any of the flight control switches to standby rudder, right? Any of the flight control switches, if you got a standby rudder, you activate the standby pump. Two, if you put the alternate flap switch to the arm position, you also activate the standby pump. There is another way to activate the pump. And the last one, three, that we always forget, all right? Automatically, it's going to be activated for you. Automatically, for takeoff and landing, the more critical phase of flight, taking off or landing. So automatically, for takeoff and landing, the flap must be extended and the airspeed must be about 60 knots. Automatically, for takeoff and landing, flap extended, airspeed about 60 knots. So how many ways do we have to activate the standby pump? That could be a question right there. Or how many ways can we activate the standby pump? Three ways. One, any of the flight control switch to standby rudder. Two, alternate flap switch to the arm position. Three, automatically for takeoff and landing, flap extended, airspeed about 60 knots. Okay. Remember I say flap extended, okay? Because sometimes when they give me the last one, well, automatically for takeoff and landing with the flap extended and airspeed about 60 knots. I say, okay. So let's assume you just took off, right? You lost the B automatically came on for you because you're coming. All right. Do the standby pump is going to be running forever until you land? No. As soon as you retract the flaps to zero, flaps up, the standby pump will stop, okay? Because it's one of the conditions, the flap must be extended. So if, you, if it happens on takeoff and you retract the flap, the standby pump will stop. Once you extend it again, it will come on automatically for you again. Okay. Remember, this is one of the conditions in order for the, for the standby pump to be on automatically for takeoff and landing, but the flap must be extended. Okay. And the airspeed must be about 60 knots. So, of course, you're going to be about 60 knots, but uh, the one that we're looking now is the flaps. The flaps. Okay. Now, so what happened with the alternate? So that's one of the conditions to activate the standby pump, right? With the alternate flap switches. So what happened when you put the alternate flap switch to arm? Well, the first one we already know, you activate the standby pump. Two, you arm the alternate flap switch. So if you put the word arm in front of the alternate here, it will give you the answer. Arm the alternate flap switch, okay? Arm the alternate flap switch. <clears throat> That will be the second. <clears throat> and the third one is the one that we always forget. Everybody, 98% of the time. The, and the third one is you close. You close the trailing edge bypass valve. You close the trailing edge bypass valve. Why are you closing the trailing edge bypass valve? Because remember, you cannot have hydraulic pressure going to the trailing edge because they will be operating with the alternate flap switch electrically. So you cannot have any hydraulic pressure on the line. So that's why you're closing the trailing edge flap bypass valves. Remember with this selector or with this switch, this alternate flap switch up and down, you only, you only operating the trailing edge flaps, huh? not the leading edge, the trailing edge. The leading edge will go down to full extension hydraulically, hydraulically, okay? Once you touch this alternate flap switch to down, automatically the trailing edge, the leading edge, I'm sorry, automatically the leading edge will full extend hydraulically and they remain full extended. The only one that you can bring back up or down and up and down, whatever you want, it will be the trailing edge flaps, okay? So, Three things happen when you put the alternate flap switch to the arm position. You arm the alternate flap switch, 
you activate the standby pump and you close the trailing edge bypass valve. Good. So Joe is coming here. I got to add something to this, yeah. okay? I have to add something because I'm hearing this. Yeah. And I want to share this with you really quick. And of course, I got the model here to illustrate. Yeah. Okay. Um, the rudder pressure reducer, mm -hmm. okay? The, the, if you don't know, there was a American Airlines airplane that took off in New York mm. and they snapped the rudder off of the plane. In, in fact, they snapped the vertical stabilizer. The entire vertical stabilizer, meaning, let me put it on a black background. See this part here? The vertical stabilizer, the whole thing came off. Now, <clears throat> the reason that happened, there's se several reasons why that came to be the case. But something that you need to know is that these flight control surfaces, specifically the rudder, is designed for one full application. So let's say, let's say that you were to uh, put a full left rudder input. It'll take the full left rudder input, and then if you released it quickly, you just took your foot off the pedal, the airplane oh. would yaw back to neutral, it would overswing slightly because of the momentum, and then it would ultimately stabilize back in the middle, right? Think about any plane that you have flown, a 172, a, a, a bearing, a Piper Warrior, any airplane. If you yaw it and let go of the pedal quickly, it will, re it will reduce back to the neutral position. It'll actually overswing a little bit and then it'll neutralize back in the neutral position, right? Well, what happened on this American flight was that they were giving full rudder deflections left and right abruptly. In other words, they were going full left. I guess left will be that way, right? Full left, full right, full left, full right. And the issue is that the tail, specifically the vertical stabilizer, is, is not certified to accept that level load. Now, <clears throat> this goes beyond the scope, I think, of what we're talking about, but the, the certification of transport category jets falls under FAR Part 25. So if you look in the Federal Aviation Regulation under Part 25, it lays out a bunch of items that a transport category jet needs to comply with to, to get awarded the category of transport category jet. One of them is the ability to have a full rudder input and release it to neutral. Now, <clears throat> ever since this happened where that vertical stabilizer snapped, they introduced the rudder pressure reducer, which basically means as you speed up or throughout a critical phase of flight as well, you will have a reduced pressure to the rudder so that regardless of how hard you slam on the pedal, yeah. we won't break the tail off. That's the deal behind the RPR or the rudder pressure mm -hmm. reducer. Now, another part of certification is that we must be able to meet second segment climb. And this is gonna answer for you why we have also the standby operation. Second segment climb means this, you need to be able to take off, have an engine fail, and still climb at a rate that will meet or, or rather clear all obstacles. So at gross weight with one engine, we can clear all of the obstacles. Now, the only way to do that is to have the landing gear up. And what happens is the landing gear is powered from the A hydraulic system. So now the A hydraulic system is also powered from the number one engine, right? So let's say that you take off here, okay? And this number one engine fails. Now I don't have the engine, which means I've lost the engine driven, the engine driven uh, hydraulic pump. I've lost the volume moving pump. When you lose that A hydraulic pump, a volume moving pump, the landing gear transfer unit will have to retract the landing gear in order to meet the second segment climb. In other words, in order to clear all obstacles, we're gonna have to get that gear up so the landing gear transfer unit comes into play. Well, now think about why you would need a standby pump. You have no A system engine driven pump. You have a little electric pump 
you have the B system that's trying to get the gear up through the landing gear transfer unit. And you have a need for all of this rudder input because of the differential thrust from that missing engine. So basically now we need a bunch of rudder authority, volume, hydraulic fluid, volume and pressure. The standby pump comes on automatically to supply standby rudder pressure to the rudder so that we can maintain directional control mm -hmm. while the B system is busy via the landing gear transfer unit, retracting the landing gear. So the whole purpose behind the automatic operation, as Juan was saying, is to mm -hmm. minimize your workload, workload yeah. throughout a critical phase of flight, yet you still have the benefit of getting that extra help from a hydraulic pump without you having to worry about turning a pump on because you're too busy trying to keep the mm -hmm. airplane flying straight. Yeah. Does that make sense? Paul. Yeah. 